Hi, and welcome to the course Econometrics 2. My name is Morten and I'll be your teacher in the course. We have four teaching assistants, Dan, Joachim, Martin and Sebastian, who will teach the seven exercise classes. We will do our best to provide you with the best possible learning experience in this course. In this video, I'll briefly introduce you to the structure and the content of the course, as well as the assignments and the exam. The course will give you an introduction to time series econometrics. We will build on the tools and models you've worked with in probability theory and statistics and econometrics 1. But in this course we deal with economic time series. And because time series data have certain characteristics that are very different from cross-sectional data, we need to develop new econometric tools and models which take these different characteristics into account. That's what we will provide you with in this course. After completing the course, you should have a solid understanding of the underlying statistical theory and you should be able to carry out empirical analysis of economic time series on your own. In the master's program, you can extend what we learn here and you can take courses such as advanced macroeconometrics and the series on financial econometrics. Over the last semesters, we've made a number of changes in the structure of the course. All the changes we've made have been based on five principles and they all aim at providing you with a better learning experience. So the first principle is that we want more student activation inside the classroom and outside the classroom. We don't want you to just sit passively at all lectures listening to me deriving estimators and explaining about the models. We don't want you to just sit and listen to your TA going through all the different steps of the empirical analysis. Instead, we want you to work with the content. We think you will learn the content much better by working with it actively. We will also require you to prepare for lectures and exercises. You will be asked to watch online videos, do quizzes and some small exercises. The second principle is that we want to provide you with more and better focused feedback. We want you to try to solve a problem first and then we will help you, guide you and provide you with feedback on how you proceed. We want you to work on the assignments, hand them in and then we want you to provide feedback on each other's work so that you both give and receive a lot of feedback. Such trial and error process where you try first, then get feedback, and then you understand and continue is a crucial part of a good learning process. The third principle is we want to encourage collaboration. We encourage you to work together on the assignments as well as the exam in groups of up to three people. Ultimately, learning is a social process and we know that you can actually learn a lot from each other. So we encourage you to collaborate. The fourth principle is increased student autonomy and a shared responsibility. First, we provide you with different ways of engaging with the content. For example, we provide you with online videos going through some of the topics, we provide you with review quizzes, and we have online exercises that you can work with at your own pace, whenever you want, wherever you want, and as many times as you want. That gives you increased autonomy over your own learning process, but it also increases your responsibility for your own learning process. Additionally, we want you to share the responsibility with us, the teachers, for how this course works for you. We will do an extensive and continuous evaluation of the course. If something doesn't work, you have to tell us and we will try to see if we can improve it. If something works and you want more of it, you should also let us know and we will see what we can do. So we have a shared responsibility for making the course work for you as best possible. The fifth principle is that we will use blended learning. We will combine our exercise classes and lectures with online activities such as videos, quizzes and tutorials. We think this is a good way to get you to work actively with the content at your own pace, outside the classroom.
We have structured the course in five major topics. First, linear regression with stationary time series, then dynamic models, unit root and co-integration, time variant volatility, arch and gauge models, and finally generalized method of moments, GMA. We will work with each of these topics for a period of two to three weeks. For each of the topics, you will be asked to write an assignment. So the assignment will be a combination of the theory, the econometric theory, and applied work. You will experience how the econometric tools can actually be used to carry out actual empirical analysis. So for example, you will be asked to make a model that can forecast GDP in the future, or you'll be asked to test the empirical validity of a specific economic hypothesis. We've structured the rest of the content in the course around the assignments. So we have created a set of learning modules which combine readings, videos, quizzes and exercises. These are the online tools that you can work with on your own. And then we have lectures and exercise classes. So all these activities will take you through all the steps that are needed in order to carry out the empirical analysis in the assignment. They will allow you to work with the content in a variety of ways so that you can get a deep understanding of what is going on and how it all fits together. For the lectures we will use a flipped classroom model. It means that we will ask you to do preparations before you come to the lecture. For example, we will ask you to read 10 pages in the lecture note. We will ask you to watch a short 10-minute video available on YouTube and embedded on the Absalon side. We will ask you to do a short review question, multiple choice questions that will take you through some of the key concepts in the readings and the video. And then finally, we will ask you to do a short, a small exercise. For example, we will ask you to derive an estimator and provide you with some guidance along the way. So all these things you can do at home. We will ask you to do it before you get to the lecture. You can do it at your own pace whenever you want and as many times as you want. Now, because we moved some parts of what used to be in the lecture, for example, we moved it into a short video that gives an introduction to the topic, it allows us to free up some time during the lecture. And we will use the lectures for two things primarily. First, we will review your understanding of the content you work with at home. We will make sure that we fill in the gaps whenever there was something you didn't understand. So there will be some lecturing, but instead of lecturing on everything, we will focus on those elements that you found difficult. Second, we will work with problem solving. We will ask you problems or questions that are related to the assignments that you're working with on your own. We will use this problem solving to apply, analyze and evaluate on the content that you work with at home. So our hope is that by using such a flipped classroom model, you will actually get a deeper understanding of the topic. In the exercise classes, the TAs will not present you a complete solution to all the problem sets. We don't want the exercise classes to simply turn into another set of mini lectures. Instead, we want to give you time to actually work on solving the exercises. You can work on the exercises individually or in groups. And of course, we will do our best to provide you with help, help you when you get stuck, tell you how you can move on and so on. At the same time, there will also be time for the TA to present solutions, but not to all parts of the problem sets. Instead, we focus on those parts that you found difficult and those parts that we find crucial. So that means that we will focus what the TA presents to just include the difficult and the crucial parts. The rest we want you to work with on your own. A lot of it will be available online with guidance and feedback and so on. For each of the five topics, there's an assignment. You can work on the assignment individually or in groups of up to three people. After you've handed in the assignment, 
you have to provide peer feedback on three other students' assignment. So you have to read their assignments and you have to provide feedback on a set of specific criteria which are focusing on how the assignment can be improved. This will take place on the online platform called peergrade.io, which I will introduce during the course. We know that you can learn a lot, not just from providing feedback to others, but also from receiving the feedback and then having the chance to improve the assignment that you handed in originally. In order to qualify for the exam, you have to hand in the assignment, individually or in group, and then individually you have to provide peer feedback to three other students' assignments. And you have to do that for a minimum of four out of the five assignments. If you do that, you're qualified for the exam. The exam is a portfolio exam at the end of the semester. It's a written assignment with four parts. The first three are three of the five assignments that you have worked with during the semester. It means that you can use the peer feedback you received to improve your assignments before you hand it in as part of your portfolio exam at the end. The fourth part is a new question question you haven't worked with before, you haven't seen before, and it will be mainly focusing on the theory, the econometric theory. The exam will be available on December 15, and it must be handed in uh, no later than one week after, on December 22nd at 10 o'clock in the morning. Finally, I want to emphasize that whenever you get stuck and you need help, you have to ask us, you have to ask us for feedback, you have to ask us for help on how you move on. You can ask questions, of course, during the exercise classes and during the lectures. And after the lectures on Thursdays, I will be available for an hour from 12 to 1. I will just stay in the lecture room and if you have questions, feel free to drop by. This is during your lunch break, so that should be possible. You can also post questions on the discussion forum on Absala. So we've linked the discussion forum to each of the different learning modules. So if there's something you don't understand, something you want us to explain, this is a place where you can post your questions or comments. Other students can comment and help you answer the question as well. But of course, we will also um, make sure that we see what's going on in there. We will hopefully be able to provide you with answers either using the forum or when we meet in class. Finally, you can also use the chat function on the Absalon side. Who knows, maybe someone else is working on the same problem, or maybe someone else just finished it and is able to help you out. So notice it at the Absalon side, there is actually a chat form, and that's another source for you to get help and feedback from your peers. Finally, thanks for watching. I look forward to meet you all tomorrow morning at the first lecture. We will meet at 8.15 building 35 in the basement. Thanks for watching. Bye.